what is going on with this stock we hold? Other than the fact that you guys know, and most of you I see uh, have come to a realization that the CEO, <laughs> Adam, isn't very well liked. But regardless, uh, if you look at the chart, you see AMC is going, well, we're still holding. It's going nowhere, hasn't gone anywhere, but we still hold out. We see what happens. I still got it in my portfolio, uh, but 32, 33 seconds in. I wanted to talk to you guys, those that are willing to listen, um, you know, about some mental health stuff. And I know that word, it's getting a little more acceptable in society as we find more and more famous people or more and more well-known people, influencers are more willing to talk about it because it does affect a lot of people. I think it affects everybody to a certain point. I think we all have some form of it. Because life is a struggle. Life is a battle, right? I mean, it constantly is. I don't care what it is uh, that's going on. There's something that we have a struggle with. And like mine yesterday, um, one of my struggles got, you know, for two days now. And <laughs> we're rolling to the third day. But uh, it's a pretty pretty tough one for me because it challenges and goes against my integrity and what I've done because it's something someone else done. And it eats at me, right? But what I want to talk about is my... My wife said something last night. We had 4th of July. Oh, by the way, happy 4th of July, folks. Hope you guys had a good one. We had a great uh, freaking show here in our town. The finale was phenomenal. Um, my wife absolutely loved it because it showed her favorite, like where they explode and go, I forget what they're called, but they there were those white goldish lights. Anyway, it was really cool because they did like several of them up in the sky oh, all at once. Really cool. So hopefully you guys had a cool one. But anyway, getting off subject here, chasing squirrels. Whoop, there went a squirrel. But no, for real. Um, I have not shied away from it uh, ever since 2016. I've learned to get more and more transparent. People can say what they want. People can think what they want. Um, I am registered, or registered, I hate to use the word registered, uh, labeled <laughs> through the VA, you know, as basically PTSD, um, as well as depression and anxiety and other things like that. I've said in other videos when I was a lot younger, some of the struggles I had with, you know, suicide attempts um, after that first divorce when I was pretty much an alcoholic, right? And God plays a big part, but I'm not going to get off into religion or shoving that down your throat. I just wanted to talk about something, get it off my back, get it off my chest. Um, my wife had mentioned it last night. We were watching the kids. I was watching them. And like my main focus of going out there and sitting in that heat is watching my kids be able to enjoy it, right? They're creating memories. I got to do certain things as a child to try to create memories. I, as a father, want to see it. But I realized last night that I want to see it 10 times more possibly than normal and my wife made a comment to me she says you really didn't have anybody did you i didn't and it just stopped and i just kind of blurted out i said no i didn't i have siblings but they are older my sister unfortunately um when we were young and the cps child protective services for whatever reason it may be had come in and my mom and dad had gotten divorced my dad was an alcoholic um mom whole other story anyway when we were real young me and my sister are the last two youngest ones i have a bunch of siblings up the chain i mean i got a brother that just turned 60 <laughs> so um and i'm 45 but i have sisters three sisters older than that from another marriage my dad had but regardless um as the baby in the family when the cps took us i think i might have been three or four i'm not 100 percent sure uh, but my sister and i were taken and then my aunt and uncle who couldn't have kids ended up taking us in, right? Well, in that childhood, I remember bits and pieces of my sister. It was the only thing I had in this world, okay? It's the only thing I felt like I could trust that cared about me, that loved me. It's the only piece of family I have. Imagine being a three or four or five-year-old, three or four-year-old, and mom, I have no memories of mom, right? We can go on that in a minute, but like, I mean, I have a select few, but as a child, right? And then my sister had that little bit of memory, and then I guess she was just old enough that my aunt and uncle couldn't tolerate her. I don't know what the case may be. There's other reasons, but they decided to ship her off to my grandma's where she got raised out there, and I couldn't see her anymore. You know, and here's this poor girl. I mean, what is my sister? Seven years older than me, so she was like 12, 10 or 12. Um, she was at that point unruly. They couldn't handle her. So it left me behind as a young kid that they could try to mold, right? And unfortunately, what that created is I kind of grew up in a life abandoned, afraid, didn't have my sister, felt like no one loved me, no one supported me, no one fought for me, no one cared for me. And I didn't get to experience what it was like to have the siblings in the household, 
the attention from a sibling, the, you know, uh, like my daughter was picking on my son. She's like, well, my sister did it to me, so now I get to do it, right? You know, those things, if you had siblings that you got to do and joy together and grow up together. And I didn't have that. I didn't have the mom either, um, unfortunately. I hated my aunt and uncle as a kid. I felt like an outsider, a black sheep. It was uh, my mom's side of the family, not my dad's side. So even though I was carrying my dad's name, that side of the family didn't like my dad anymore because of the divorce between my mom. So I carried that name. So anytime I went and hung out at grandma's house or the cousins, that was all from my mom's side. They treated me different, I'm sorry. And so unfortunately that created an internal identity, right? And it also created, I just don't know. You know, like one of the things a wife talks about is, you don't do this. How come you don't do this? You know, and I'm like, because I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I never experienced it. I don't know what it was like to be held and cared for like a mom does, to to be told it's okay, you know, and, and here, son, it's going to be okay. Let me give you a hug. Come lay in my lap. Let me, let me rub on your head. You know, the things that you may or may not do for your child. Like for me, I'm I'm overdoing it. I know I probably am because I didn't get any of it. So I'm trying to think what would I would have wanted or what kind of love could I show? What can I do better at? And one of those things is making sure that I tell my son and my daughters uh, that I'm proud of them um, all the time, like daily. Um, I unfortunately have zero, zero, guys, zero memory of my dad, my mom, anyone growing up. Except for my uncle that raised me, I think a couple times he said, I'm proud of his son, but I'm like, don't call me your son. You know, unfortunately, as a young kid, because of my family, to me, it was taken away. I was thrown away and abandoned, but I don't have that, right? And so I look to try to give that in just as much as I can. And as older as I get now, on the backside of, you know, life expectancy, 45, already halfway to 46, I just look back, you know, and it's an empty, empty part of who I am. It's a empty part of what I am. Um, you know, like I didn't experience these things. I don't know how to, I don't, I mean, I had to self survive. I had to take care of myself. It's always been me who fights for me. You know what I mean? Like who goes out of their way to stand up for me or look after me, right? That, that just didn't really ever happen. And so I find myself as it created that person that I am, that I tend to want to fight back and fight against everyone else and help someone constantly because that's all I wanted, right? So I'm going to be willing to do that. I'm going to go out of the way. And unfortunately, it causes issues because, you know, like this whole AMC crap, I got wrapped up in it for three years, did the march on Washington, D.C., went on TV, did everything I could because I felt like I was fighting for everyone else because no one else was. None of those people cared. And it's just like my work. And that's why I'm triggered with my work right now big time is because I don't feel like anybody is fighting for me and my work. I'm losing money now because of a bad decision someone else made that put me in an awkward position now that creates this persona that I did something wrong or, you know, basically they went against what I told a customer and now it's this battle and I look like the fool when they said things they should have never said. But unfortunately, right, that has now created that and now I'm carrying that weight, right? A, I'm not good enough, which I've shared with you before, guys, about not being good enough, how that's a what I call heart issue developed through my childhood at fear of abandonment two struggles I had and of course challenge and integrity but that's a little bit different that usually falls under uh not good enough right so I'm just kind of opening up sharing this like you know I already have issues with sleeping I'm all part of the PTSD and anxieties and all that crap right depression um but man this right here <laughs> you know what goes on in our heads is just the um they can build us up, break us down, destroy us, send us in different directions, lead us to drugs and alcohol, other forms of self, uh, self-medicating, what do they call it? You know what I mean? Um, but those are real, man. And, and I just, I encourage you. I think one of the biggest things has helped me is I went from being this brick wall where I didn't believe in it. I thought it was ridiculous. I was one of those people that was don't talk about it. Mental health is not an issue. It's all made up. You just need to be tougher. You need to be stronger. You see, I'm using the knife hand. That's a, a Marine military thing with the way we box things up and you be tough and you, you can do this, right? <clears throat> Funny part is how many military folks unfortunately commit suicide every 20 
seconds, 30 seconds, 40 seconds throughout the United States, um, or every 30 minutes. It's a lot. And I was there, 2008, 2007, I tried. And uh, it was a dark, dark period of time, four years of being drunk, 24-7, seven, seven, almost seven days a week. I actually took Sunday off um, <laughs> and try to recoup, right? But it was hard, you know? And when you have those things happen in your life, man, they take a toll. Um, they will. And then just life in general, trying to survive. And all those aspects just can affect a marriage and affect who you are. And I got to admit, I go through these cycles where I become mania about something. You know, that's part of apparently the depression and the or the bipolar, right? It's what they're saying. You know, they're trying to label what all these actions are that, you know, people choose. But for me, it's when I feel like I'm fighting for something. And you'll see that any of you that have fallen along long enough, you'll see that it, I'll go off and I'll talk crap back to anybody that talks crap to me. I'm not afraid not to do that. And I'll keep talking. They keep talking, I'll keep talking, right? I mean, uh, it's words, but I find myself sometimes enjoying it. <laughs> it's sad to say. Uh, probably many reasons for that, but I just rambled on. We're almost 12 minutes. Those of you that took the time to listen, I'm hoping that it helps. Um, I, I believe in sharing. That's why I said with the brick wall, when I started to really focus on being transparent and not afraid and just sharing about those struggles, yeah, people may judge you. People may think differently of you. People may want to put you down, but they're only doing that because they're f***ed up too. <laughs> I'm sorry. They're messed up too. They're just afraid to admit it. They're afraid to discuss it. They're afraid to talk about it because everyone has something that's going on. We do. And it's all in here. It's all those struggles. And I'm telling you, it's generated through your childhood. And I already see things playing out in my children, and I'm trying like heck not to allow those to happen. But I believe there's also a generational curse of, like, I'm I'm trying my hardest not to become my father. But I am doing and acting in the same unfortunate direction that that man went in. And frankly, it scares me. It scares me. Uh, and I don't want to go in my mom's direction. That was a, a complete mental breakdown, that direction, you know, with the struggle she had. And, I don't want to do that, right? But <clears throat> we can break the bonds. I think we can try to change them. I messed up the first time around with my kids. Um, now that I'm a lot older, the three that I have now, the young age, I'm doing everything I can, trying to put conscious effort in. Like before my oldest daughter goes to bed, I go in there and lay down next to her and have a nice conversation with her, just talk about things with her, keep that bond going. Because uh, that's another thing I discovered about me is when I hit a certain age, it's like I got stuck there. Um, I think it was like 10 or 11 or 12. It's an awkward period. And that's where I became tough. Um, because by 15, I was living on the streets, right? And there's an inner side of me. If you know me personally, there's this inner heart that really deeply cares. It does. For helping someone else. Like I am, But I don't show it. I put a shield on and I just hold it in and it irks me and hates me. And I, it's why I don't try, I try to stay out of comments of other people's YouTubes because if I see someone attacking them, I go after them. <laughs> like, dude, you know what I mean? Because I want to defend that person. I want to protect that person simply due to the fact no one did it for me. Yeah, so I want to be able to offer it. But there's hope. There's always hope, guys. Whether it be you know, your faith in Lord Jesus, whether it be your faith in yourself, whether it be anything, I do highly encourage uh, seeking help, talking to someone, uh, whether they're a mental health provider or not, just being able to conversate with someone, share those things, share those struggles, especially for, for men, um, when we hold it in, when we can get it out and allow it to escape, we can recover, recoup, rebuild, right? And we can realize, like, and so speaking it out loud, we can realize it. Prior to 2016, I would have never admitted what I did in 2008, twice. I would have never done it. I wouldn't, and I wouldn't admit to any of the struggles I had. They were all BS. But the reality is, they exist. And any of you who followed me for three years, you'll see my ups and downs. If you recall my videos, you'll see my anger. When it gets escalated, like I was towards the whole Adam fiasco, what did I do for a year, year and a half? All I focused on was outing that man because I felt like he was hurting you. He was hurting me. He was hurting all of us that believed in him, that believed in this company, believed in making a difference and standing up against the freaking elites and standing up against Wall Street. 
and that man was just a part of them. So what did I do? I got triggered. So it's kind of how it works, right? But anyway, 15 minutes. My, I am talking too much. Thank you guys. Uh, it gives me a place just to share. I'm up and down. One day I'm going to be here. One day I'm going to be there. That's just my personality. That's who I am. But deep down in my heart, I care about every one of you, even those that you hate on me, uh, because I know how hard this world is. I know what suffering is like. I know what it's like to have nothing. I know what it's like to be nothing. I know what it's like to have no support, no comfort. I know what it's like to do this world alone. And it ain't easy. But here I am. I made it this far. You can do the same. You can make it far. Don't give up on yourself. Don't quit. Don't self-medicate. Talk to someone and start sharing. Get it out there. Drop in the comments. You know, if you're struggling with something, drop in the comments, man. Because then other people, may they respond. That's what I love to see. Share what struggle you're going through. Write it in there. I'll respond. Maybe someone else will respond. Maybe we can encourage each other instead of fighting each other and being divided in this world. Because it's not like the cows, the animals, or the any other freaking species in this world is going to come give you a hug and take care of you. Just saying.